Well, good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Providence Presbyterian Church. We're glad you're here this morning. I don't know if the, is the speaker on? Mm -hmm. It is on. Okay, good. Um, so if you're here out, sorry, we're, we're glad you're here. It's a little chilly, but not too bad yet. Um, I wanted to give you an update. Hopefully, um, we're going to get our certificate of occupancy for the Chapel in the Woods renovation um, this coming week. Um, and that doesn't mean it's completely done yet, but we're, we'll be able to use it. And so if we do have a Sunday morning where it's, you know, a little, little more frigid than this, uh, we will meet in the Chapel in the Woods. Um, so uh, timing's going to be perfect. All God's timing here, and we give thanks for that. But we're glad you're here this morning. Uh, we have coffee and lemonade on the table over there. Feel free to get up and get anything to drink you'd like during the service. Also, um, there's bulletins, um, some other information as you leave about some mission projects. Um, there's an offering plate if you'd like to contribute to the ministry and mission of Providence. Uh, we appreciate that as well. A um, couple of announcements I wanted to share. Um, in your bulletin, there's many different things happening, a lot happening this fall here at Providence. Highlight um, our, our associate pastor installation service, John Joseph's installation service next Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. This is a Presbytery event, so there'll be other people here from the Presbytery for this service. I um, encourage you to come on out and uh, join us for this worship experience as we officially um, install John as the associate pastor here. And then afterwards, we're going to have a, a supper. Um, it started as a light supper, but I don't think it's light anymore, is it? Uh, in typical Providence fashion, come on out and we will um, have plenty to eat. We'll let you know next week what exactly the menu is. Um, also, um, in your bulletin, I just encourage you to read about the Operation Christmas Child, um, the Providence on Wednesday, um, 5.30 on Wednesday evenings, classes for all ages, 6.30, um, supper together in the Fellowship Hall. A few announcements today um, from some other individuals. So we'll start with Rachel. Uh, Rachel is going to share with us a little bit about our upcoming trick-or-treat trail. Rachel's my wife also. Sorry, so, Kate so and I were attention. talking and we were ready. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Well, on October 20th, which is a Friday from 6 to 8.30 p.m., is our biggest family outreach event of the year. And so we call it the Trick or Treat Trail. In about two hours, about 300 kids come through our campus, trick or treat, have free dinner, maze, hayride. It's just a very great event. And so there are three ways that you can help us. Um, the point of the Trick or Treat Trail is to get them on our campus, let them see what a church is, let them see just um, Christians loving them. And in addition to all the candy and good things they get, they also get Bible storybooks. So just as an example, and these will be over on the table, um, the little kids are gonna get a book about Christmas. Um, the older kids, we have um, comic book Bibles and um, one person told me that when they were young, someone who was here, they went to a church event like this and got their first Bible, and they still have it today. The two years that we've done this, um, we've gotten emails from many people thanking us. We've had little kids get their comic book Bible and tell us we're going to go home and read this tonight. So it's just a wonderful event, and it's very um, festive uh, on the campus. Three ways to help. One is just volunteer. So there are three things you can do to volunteer. You can um, host what we say, host a candy table, which is we have about 20 tables. People decorate them and kids go through and trick or treat. The only thing about hosting a candy table is you have to sign up beforehand because we needed to have a table for you and there's lots of competition for electricity. That's how much people decorate their table. So you can either email me at rachel at providencehhi.org or sign up afterwards. Um, we also need people to run the popcorn machine. We need people to help with a cookout because we give everyone uh, free hot dogs and hamburgers. So again, there's a sign up there or you can email me at rachelprovidencehhi.org. Secondly, we need candy. Um, you can just bring bags of candy to the church office or to the next week to the church um, services. Again, we have about three or 400 kids come through. So we need lots of candy. Um, finally is to invite people. 
Um, if you are on social media, it is the most powerful way to evangelize, uh, no doubt. And so if you're on social media or if you're on Facebook and you have never liked our church page, you should go on there. There's tons of wonderful things on there. Instagram, we have a very active account on both. So if you're on either one of those, if you'll just go on, we have an event inviting people from the community to just share that. Next week, there will be postcards that you can pass out to neighbors and friends to invite them to this event. And of course, we always ask you to pray for all the kids in our church and in the city and the ones who will come through this campus, that they will, their lives will just be changed by this event. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel. I'd like to invite um, Rick Reichel. He also has a couple announcements for us. Rick is our uh, clerk of session. Uh, our session is our board of elders here at Providence. Thank you, sir. Oh, we have a new employee. Oh, <laughs> Jusu, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> this is that time of year that um, we say thank you to four members, four elders, and four deacons that are, have, are finishing their three-year terms of service um, here at Providence. And those elders that are um, once an elder or deacon, always an elder, always a deacon, but um, from an act of service, uh, we thank Susanna Johnson, Aaron McMacken, Brad Parker, and Laura Walston. And from the deacons, we thank Frida Jasper, Beth Parker, Deborah Reese, and Cinda Shatira. And as you know from um, our stewarding, stewarding groups around the island, replacing Frida, Beth, and Deborah is going to be a, t a tough assignment. So we're looking, looking to recruit. Uh, and that's what we're about. Um, we have seven members at last year's annual meeting that were voted to be, be our nominating committee. And we have, um, uh, some of them are here today. We have Elder Greg Vivinti here today. We have Elder Joe Kyle here today. Uh, Kathy Carter is not here. Sandy Kenmer is not here. Patty Schroeder, Nikki Wynn is here. These seven members make up our nominating committee. And if you have an interest to consider being involved in either um, on the session as an elder or a deacon, please stop by and, and let them know. We have our list from people from the past that have expressed an interest. A lot of the people have been working with us for many, many years. Um, it's for a three-year term. Some refer to it as a sentence. Um, the, um, but it, uh, it, a lot of good is done by a lot of people. And uh, we, we encourage you to prayerfully consider joining um, either um, as an elder or a deacon. Um, and also on the Connect card, if you have an interest and you don't, f don't feel like you know one of the existing nominating committee members, just put it on the Connect card and let us know and we'll get back to you. And if not for this coming term, maybe for the future, we'll get you more involved in some of the active church committees. And also, um, Bill, if I may, on a personal note, Bill last week um, asked to lift up several members at the 830 service and the 1030 service in prayer uh, that were ongoing. They're experiencing some health issues. It's been a tough 30 days for the Reichel family. Um, my wife, Gay, about a month ago, uh, experienced a, a major brain hemorrhage. Scary. Um, uh, emergency rooms, neurological ICUs, um, great, great doctors um, over um, in Savannah um, had um, a difficult but, but very, very successful um, tumor removed from her brain. And um, God works in great ways. Um, we went to this group mentioned last Sunday. Tuesday, we, wa we, met, we met with a surgeon. And he started the meeting by saying, I wish I could share these results with all my patients. Wow. Um, we th thank you. Thank you very much for your prayers. The stewardship uh, groups that have called and, um, and caring members, heartfelt and um, prayers work. God is great. And thank you very much. And how appropriate that our opening song is, Oh, How Good It Is. So let us stand and worship our Lord and Savior.
may be seated. I'd like to invite Kate Keith forward for our minute for mission today. Well, can you tell when I'm dressed for Sunday? Okay. If you need a clue, here's one. Here's another. And this is the clincher. Ladies at Providence to sign up for our fall golf frolic. It will be on November the 4th. Our first tee time is at 2.34 in the afternoon. It's a scramble, no strain, no pressure. If you think, well, it's been a long time since I've played, maybe you've forgotten all your bad habits. <laughs> if you are just a new player, what better group to practice your skills on than this friendly group that the Providence Lady. And if you are a very competitive golfer, we're gonna have a box at the first tee where you can check your competitive spirit. <laughs> You'll get it back after we're through, okay? <laughs> this is just fun and we're going to follow the game itself with a time of fellowship at the Lagerhorn Tavern at Oyster Reef Golf Club. If you can't play golf, but you would just like Come and join the ladies for some fun. It'll, we'll get there around 4.30 or 5. This is all on November the 4th. Uh, it's on a Tuesday. You need to sign up so we can get everybody in place for the game. And we hope to see you there. Thanks. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> um, a couple things to hold in prayer today. I um, wanted to mention our Hands for Haiti project. Um, at our 1030 service, we were trying to think of how, how can we let Hands for Haiti know that uh, we've, we've reached our goal and what that, what that final total is. So at 1030, we're going to have our children's message. And we're going to have our children share that with Hands for Haiti. But let me just tell you that we have exceeded our goal um, in our in our. Um, mission project here and we are at $142,376.40. So we praise God for your faithfulness. And I have to tell you that that, um, that there was a lot of people participated in this. Um, there were, were many, many um, Providence folks and, and folks in the community. Um, so we do thank you for your faithfulness. And also um, to remind you that this Providence maternity wing up in the mountains of Haiti um, it's going to serve over, they estimate over 500 people a week. I mean, that's a lot. I mean, that, that, you're talking changing lives. You're talking generational change. Um, so we're real excited to let um, this project go forward, and we will keep you posted as construction um, goes along. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention in our prayers this morning um, was um, Israel, um, as you've seen on the news. And, and we have a mission partner um, that we support over there and um, been in contact with that person um, over the last couple days, actually the last day, and um, it, it's not good. And so prayer, she's asked fervently for our prayers, um, for wisdom for the government and military leaders, um, for the safe return of hostages. Um, she has told us that, that they're saying this is going to be a long and bloody conflict um, it'll be more than in previous wars. So, so we just encourage you to pray for them. And, 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 and she's asked us to, um, if we would adopt two Christian churches over there and to specifically pray for them. So over the next couple of weeks, we will let you know more about those churches. One is in Gaza City and the other is on the Lebanese border. Um, so we will be sharing that information with you as well. And then also, um, there's actually a church in our presbytery um, Dorchester Presbyterian Church, which is over in, in Somerville, which is over near Charleston, um, they have a, a group over there right now on a trip to the Holy Land. Um, and so pray for them as well as they try to, try to um, um, discern how, what to do and how to get out and, and all of that. So uh, many prayers there. And then more on a, on a uh, church family note, um, we had a death in our congregation this past week, well-beloved member, um, Neil Leverett, passed away, 102 years old, and uh, 
we praise God for his life and for all he meant to Providence. And, and again, we'll be sharing more details about a service um, in the coming days as well. So with that said, let us unite our hearts in prayer today. We do pause for a few moments today to lift up the prayers of, of our hearts, of this church, um, prayers for the world. We do think of this beginning of a war in Israel, and we do pray, Lord, um, for those who are in harm's way. Uh, we pray for your wisdom to prevail in people's hearts, and we pray, Lord, that, that however this unfolds, that especially those who are over there now, that you will help them to feel your presence as they seek to know the next steps and, and what to do and how to do it. And we continue to pray for the war in Ukraine, for those in harm's way there. We pray for, for those within our own country and indeed around the world who, who are hungry, those who are refugees on the border, those who, who need care in, in so many ways. We also think of those in Haiti this day, those seeking medical care, those women who, who need a safe place to give birth and Lord, we do pray that Hands for Haiti will continue their mission to, to bring safe medical care to those in need. And finally, we do pray for, for those within our congregation in special need this day, many, many people known in our hearts and minds. And we do pray, pray for the Leverett family, for his daughter, Barbara. And we pray, Lord, that um, you'll help them to feel your presence during this time. Um, and we do give thanks for Neil and for all that he meant to Providence Presbyterian Church. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Pastor Joseph. Good morning, church. Okay, so I hear there's go the sun is going to be right in my eyes in about 10 minutes. So if I start moving around, you're just going to have to follow me. And uh, for those on the live stream and those running the cameras, I'm really sorry. You're just going to have to follow me. It's okay. <laughs> they won't let me get away. Right, right. Well, first, let me say this. It has been a joy to be among you and be a part of your family. We truly feel and have experienced God's goodness in and through you. We feel like this is home for us. And so thank you for all of you who have welcomed us with open arms, who have brought us dinner, who have sent us notes and delivered plants to warm our house and to uh, to put mat delivered mats to say welcome. Um, we have just been overwhelmed by not just your hospitality, but your care for us as your family members, as your brothers and sisters in Christ. So we want to say thank you. And we look forward to continuing this relationship, this fellowship together as we grow in Christ and as we are transformed together. One of the things that um, is fascinating is... It wasn't long after we accepted the call to come to Providence, Pastor Bill Ward and I, actually I should call him the, the right reverend doctor. <laughs> uh, we talked on the phone and he mentioned to me, we're going to start a series on the Ten Commandments. And I thought, wow, because on the flight home after we accepted the call, I started thinking, Lord, what, what do you have for the family and the church at Providence. What, where are you going to take them for the next several weeks and the next several months and the next several years? And the thing that kept coming back to me was the Ten Commandments. So when we, when we, he and I spoke on the phone, he said, we're going to take on the Ten Commandments. I went, wow, we're, we're moving in the same direction together already, affirming God's call that we are one body in Christ together. So as we picked up the Ten Commandments, he said, well, what Sunday do you want to preach? And I said, well, let me take on 
uh, honor your father and mother. It seems appropriate for the associate pastor of family ministries to take on honor your father and mother. And now you're thinking, ha, this is the best one for my kids. I wish they were here. <laughs> and um, I'm thinking, this is the best one for my kids because they're here. <laughs> but I think of this moment um, in my childhood. There's a scene that I remember that is so crystal clear about a father and his son. And his son gets home from school. His name is Theo. His son gets home from school with his report card, and the report card has four D's on it. And mom and dad are not pleased at all. So mom dispatches dad, Cliff Huxtable, to go deal with his son because D's are absolutely unacceptable. And so he gets upstairs and makes his way into his room. And of course, a teenage boy, his room is just a mess. And the door opens and there's clothes lying all over the floor. And, and uh, dad sits next to his son and says, what are you doing? How, how could you have four D's? And, and Theo says, but dad, I, I just, I just want to be a regular person. You know, you and mom, you're a doctor and mom's a lawyer and, you, and that's great for you. But will you just, will you love me? for me and for who I am? And dad says, that is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. You're just lazy and you think that when you try that your brain is gonna explode and your brain's gonna ooze out of your ears and I'm your father and you're gonna do what I say because I said so. I brought you into this world and I'll take you out. And there's this wonderful relationship between a father and a son dispatched in front of us. And so often that characterizes the relationship between a parent and a child. The statement, because I said so, we have all heard from our parents, I would imagine, I heard it from my parents. And maybe you as a parent, as a grandparent, have repeated it because you want the place of honor for which God has placed you in. You see, it's no accident that the Ten Commandments start with the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. And then the second commandment, do you remember what it is? No idols. You shall not make any idols in the form of anything on earth, on the ground below, in the water. The third commandment, do you remember what that is? Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Do not misuse the name of the Lord. And then the fourth commandment is keep the Sabbath day holy. For God worked and labored for six days and rested on the seventh day. The first four commandments deal and respond to our relationship with God. We might say that's our vertical relationship. And then the second set of commandments starts with honor your father and mother. And it comes with a promise. We'll get to that in a moment. The second set of commandments or the second part some people call it the second tablet, deals with our relationship with each other. And I think it's fascinating. I don't think it's by accident that the first commandment is about God. I am the God that brought you out of Egypt. Have no other gods before me. God is God and I am not. God is the one who redeems me and saves me and pulls me out of slavery from my own sin and protects me, and guides me, and directs me. And then the authority in our lives are our parents, for which God placed them. I don't know about you, but I didn't pick my parents. God did. And uh, sometimes I wish I could have picked my parents, and my boys are thinking, yeah, it would have been real nice to have been able to pick my parents. Um, but think about how beautiful that is, that I didn't pick my parents. God did. 
God picked the parents specifically for me to create me. That the unique DNA that I hold required my mom's DNA and my dad's DNA to create me unique and loved by God. What a beautiful and fascinating moment to think about it that way, that God loves us so much that he picked the two people to create you and all of your intricacies and all of your beauty and all of your glory and all of your mistakes and all of your joys and sorrows. He picked your mom and your dad to create you. And there are no other two people like your parents with the DNA precise enough to create you. And God says, honor your father and mother. If you've got your Bible with you, I'm going to invite you to turn to Exodus 20. And I want to read the Ten Commandments to you that we might hear and understand and know God's word. And God spoke all these things. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days shall labor, you shall labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day, that is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servants. Six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all of them, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day before the Lord blessed. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male servant or female servant, his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Seems fairly simple. The fifth commandment, honor your father and mother. Maybe we just call it a day and say, got it. And we walk away being inspired and challenged to honor our fathers and our mothers. But you might miss out on this cannot miss Sunday, apparently. When I shared with someone that we were covering this, I was at the opportunity to cover this fifth commandment. They jumped up at the opportunity. They go, wow, what a great opportunity for you. And then they asked the question, what does it really mean to honor in the Bible? And I know this from my theology classes and my uh, seminary classes, one of the things that we, we want to do when we look at God's word, we want to cross the bridge back 2,000, 15 plus another 1,500 years to when the text was written. And our goal is to understand what it meant from the author. And we know Moses received the Ten Commandments. So what did God mean when he said, honor your father and mother. Well, a quick glance at the word honor, certainly we can understand it as giving someone the position of privilege. Maybe you, you invite someone to dinner and you place them at the seat of honor next to you, that they are your guest. Or maybe the place of honor might look like something uh, like a courtroom, a judge who's seated with his, his robe and he's got his his, uh, uh, what's that called? A, a, a gavel, right? And, he, and you know it. It comes down when, he, when the judge pronounces the judgment and the gavel comes down, boom, it comes down with weight and authority. And I think it's quite simple. 
to honor our fathers and our mothers, to honor my dad and to honor my mom, is to give them the place of honor and the place of authority in my life because God is the one who placed them there. Now, if you're like me, you're thinking, well, what, what, if, what if my mom or dad are, are not people who love God and love others? Maybe, maybe they've, they've neglected me as, as their child. Maybe they've abandoned me. Maybe they've hurt me in a way that I'm still wrestling with at this moment. Do I still honor them? I believe the text says yes, but in a different way. Jesus tells us to love our enemies, and that's not to say our parents are our enemies, but to love and to pray for them in the ways that you can, that Christ calls us to. Because Christ is the one who does the transforming work in our lives. Christ is the one who changes us. And certainly, we have benefited from that transforming work because we are the church and we know God's power. And so we pray that for those who are hurting and for those who hurt others. But honor your father and mother. I would say... My parents were wonderful parents. And, and if my dad's watching and worshiping with us this morning, he's, he's jumping for joy. And if my mom's watching and worshiping with us, she's jumping for joy. I remember the days in middle school and in high school, it was very difficult, to say the least. And some of you can think back to those middle school years and those high school years. And for me, it was a unique challenge because both my parents were raised that born and raised and went to school and went to college in Egypt. And here I am, this 12-year-old boy in Southern California, doing things that my parents would have never imagined, like going to the movies with the opposite sex. Oh my gosh. Forget about coming home after curfew. I just wanted to go to the movies with some of my friends at school. And my mother would have never done that growing up as a child. And I pushed boundaries like I've ne like no child has ever pressed. Maybe I'm not the only one. Maybe you can think of moments in which you pressed boundaries and you dishonored your mother and your father. Maybe you can think of moments in which your son or daughter dishonored you. and took you from the place of authority. I'm thinking about the commandment that says, thou shalt not, don't, don't misuse God's name. And I'm going, wow, we learned just not long ago that trivializing God's name, making light of it, is a violation of the commandment. And maybe when I trivialize the authority for which God has put in my life, I then violate the commandment to honor my father and my mother. The hard part growing up, going back to the story, is often heard because I said so. This is what you're going to do because I said so. And I wanted to go, why? Tell me why. Well, I have the experience. And I think it will go a long way in having the place of honor for children when we simply take time to explain ourselves. We have a great deal of experience and maturity that we need to share. We're certainly called to protect our children and to provide for them. We're certainly called to nurture them and to show them what God wants for them. That is my call as a parent. That is your call as a parent or a grandparent. To protect and to nurture your children. And sometimes it just rubs them the wrong way when we say, you're going to do it this way because I said so.
there was a study several years ago that was released. Um, and I think the results are still valid for us today. And there are, in this study, the most influential person in a child's life, you can guess it, is mom and dad. Number one, by far, without a shadow of a doubt, it is still mom and dad who are the most influential people in a child's life. Now, it gets a little more complicated because when mom and dad or mom or dad abdicate that responsibility, do you know who it goes to? The number two person is a close family member. Maybe it's a grandparent who lives down the street or an uncle who lives around the corner. That person now has a great deal of influence and authority in this child's life. If, if a grandparent or a family member is not present, do you know who it goes to? The authority of the, the place of influence goes to a teacher, a coach, a librarian, um, a close friend of the family, another adult in the life of this child. And if that other adult is not present, do you know where it goes to? To their peers. Their peers become the greatest influence in their lives. And now you're thinking for a moment, wow, that is a really good picture of our current culture. Let me push in a little bit more because I don't think the peers are their greatest influence. This study says when their peers are no longer present, do you know where it goes? It goes to the media. And think about TikTok. Think about Instagram. Think about YouTube. Think about all of the social media influencers right now in the world who are influencing the young people of our, our nation and our world. And it's kind of scary. And it's hard to think about it that way because the place of honor, the family, is coming apart. And so what do I do with that? Well, how do I carry this piece of information? What do I move, how do I move forward faithfully as a parent, as a pastor, as a friend, as a leader in the church? You get involved. You earn the right to be in the presence of a young person. And you listen carefully because they have wonderful things to share with us. We need them just as much as they need us in the church, don't we? We need their youthfulness and their vitality. I read an article that said, if you don't hear crying in the church, you're dying. Wow. And I remember that Sunday, there was a baby in the service and started crying and I got home and I read that article. And I remember being frustrated with the sound of the child and then being convicted by the Holy Spirit because it was a beautiful sound, wasn't it? And what, what a wonderful place for the child to be, to be in the sanctuary, in the church, in the place where God is God and mom and dad are mom and dad and the church comes alongside to support the family, to encourage them, to nurture them. Mom and dad are the focal point of each family. They're the ones charged with teaching the precepts teaching the covenant about the covenants of the covenant of Moses, the covenant of Abraham, the new covenant. The parents are charged with that. And to think, to have children in the presence of God and in the church family, that's exactly where we want them to be. But we have to be involved and invested and aware of what's happening in our culture. What else does it mean to honor your father and mother? I think it also means to honor them as they age. I think it means to care for them as they age. And I'm not quite there. I'm close. My parents are aging. Uh, as I'm aging, I'm feeling it. And I'm looking forward to my boys um, caring for me. I hope you're listening very carefully that as I get older, your responsibility to honor me is to care for me in my good old age. Right? Right? And last week, I had a beautiful privilege of walking with someone and caring 
for those in our church family who are aging in a way that was beautiful. I actually got to spend time with Neil just last week and pray with him. And I am so proud to call Providence home because we care for our aging members and we give them the place of honor for which they have been appointed by God and rightfully serve at. And so I'm grateful for those opportunities. I'm grateful and encouraged by a church family who loves those in the place of honor for which God has placed them. So what do we do with all of this? What about this promise? Because it does say that honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land your God is giving you. What does that promise mean? Paul actually tells us it's the only commandment with a promise. Does that mean I'm going to live to be a ripe old 102? You know what? I hope so, maybe. But I think it means something much deeper than the promise of living to the ripe old age of 102. I think it means that when we learn and honor our father and mother, there is great joy in the stability of having wisdom before us to lead us and to teach us. What a tremendous blessing it is to live in the kingdom of heaven here and now as we experience God's goodness through those who have gone before us. What a blessing it is to learn that (laughs) the stove is hot and I shouldn't touch it. It will burn my hand. I don't need to experience that to know that the stove is hot and it's going to burn my hand. I just need someone wise and mature to show me and to tell me, don't touch the stove. It's hot. It will hurt you. And do you see what they're doing? They're saying, don't do this. Not because I said so, but because it will cause you harm. And I'm here. I'm placed in your life to protect you and to guide you. And so heed my wisdom. Therein lies the blessing of living long in the land that God has given us. And so the invitation is for us to honor our father and mother, to place them in the position of authority in our lives, that we might learn from them, that we might grow and be protected, and that we might see God's goodness in our lives every single day. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for my mom and my dad. We thank you for the moms and dads who are seated here in this congregation. We thank you for the good that they have taught us. And we thank you for the evil that they have protected us from. Lord, may we go from this place honoring them with our lives, honoring them with our words, honoring them with our thoughts. Because when we honor them, Lord, we honor you as the one true God who loves us and redeems us. And we say thank you. We pray this in your son's name. And all God's people said, amen. I invite you to stand if you're willing and able. We're going to continue our worship. We're going to sing the closing song, Standing on the Promises. Jusu, welcome yeah. back. Thank you. We're it's so glad to, to have you back. It's good to be back. So let's continue worshiping our Lord, singing Standing on the Promises.